Hi everybody, it's uh, John back again with another model inbox review. You're probably looking at this image and thinking, what on earth is that? And to be honest with you, before I bought this kit, I probably would have said exactly the same thing. Um, what you're actually looking at is a French reconnaissance bomber called a Potez 540. Um, they were designed to a doctrine that was so far out of date by the start of World War II that the aircraft fell far too easy victim to German aircraft than really they should have done. They should really not have been put into service in the French Army de l'Air, but they did see service in the Spanish Civil War as reconnaissance bombers and transport aircraft, and they served relatively well in that theatre um, until the appearance of the German Condor Legion, um, where they didn't fare so well. The, the model we're actually looking at today is a Heller kit which was first released in this style boxing in 1972. Um, the early release boxings, uh, quite a lot of the early release boxings had this style of artwork, um, but the first release boxing uh, had 172nd scale MVC, which I think is French from U Museum. Um, and the Heller box, this style of artwork was very common. And it actually shows something that's very unusual about the Potes 540 in that it wasn't a pusher-puller, um, like tractor and pusher layout, like a lot of um, 1930s twin-engine and four-engined aircraft. It was actually a twin tractor engine, but the engines were mounted on like little stub wings. They weren't even wings, they were like a sort of an engine mount at the side of the fuselage, um, which was very unorthodox. Uh, but actually, I, I think it would make quite an interesting model subject. So when I bought this kit and saw it, I thought, God, that looks really complicated. Um, and looking at the plastic parts and the way they go together, I think the aircraft itself is quite complicated in model form as well. But that's the 72 uh, initial release from Heller. And then in 1972, they also released the kit through Rico. Now, I'm not sure who Rico actually sell models to, um, but I'm guessing it's a Japanese market or maybe the Far East through a Japanese agent um, because Rico have sold kits for Hasegawa and several other model companies um, and they seem to sort of hover around the Far Eastern region. But if any of you guys out there know for sure, just pop the information into a, in, you know, into the comments. It'll be quite interesting um, to, to know that for sure. But this is the same release same model box everything's identical it's just got the rico marketing and it was released in the same year in 1972 then in 1974 the box artwork remained the same but the box style actually changed um, and heller actually released this style of box with a little tiny flag in the bottom left hand corner marked heller they did away with the musi um logo and they came up with I think this is Aunali in 72nd scale or Escolo in 72nd scale. I'm not sure. Um, my French isn't fantastic. But um, this this yellow flag appeared in the bottom left-hand corner, and that's how you can tell the difference between a 70, uh, 70, 1972 issue and a 1974 issue. Then in 1979, Heller changed their box artwork and box design altogether, and the Potes 540 appeared um, in a side view elevation of the of the aircraft, sitting on the ground. Um, it looks like its propellers are running up. I don't think the aircraft is actually static. It looks like the aircraft is supposed to be running up, but it gives you more of an idea of what the aircraft looks like um, from a side view, and it is quite an unusual pretty ugly looking kit actually ugly looking aircraft i remember seeing a review for this particular model where somebody actually had this kit in their stash for several years and they took it out and had a go at it and then put it back on the shelf and it was languishing on their build shelf for about five years and he said that he would bought quite a number of hella kits because they had an appeal to him a bit like an ugly puppy and he bought several of the Heller um, bomber and reconnaissance bomber aircraft and some of those light attack aircraft. He bought quite a few of them and found them quite interesting to put together. And this is a 79 release with the black border 
that goes around the uh, the artwork that Heller released in the late 70s and throughout the uh, throughout the 80s. Um, so that was 1979. Then in 1982, Heller and Humbrol um, got together with a boxing, and this is actually the boxing that I've got of this particular kit, and they produced the POTUS 540 with a mu Z 172nd scale logo attached on the right-hand corner. Um, and I think it was like a museum um, range of aircraft kits that Heather and Humbrol sort of joint matched together and produced these kits with this style of boxing. And it's interesting because as far as I know, this is the only boxing of this entire kit that's been produced by anybody that actually has an image of the model on the front cover. Um, and it actually it looks quite interesting. But that's the 82 release from Humbrol Heller. And then in 1999, SMER got on the, on the scene um, and started to build quite a lot of Heller models in the SMER lo um, boxing under their marquee. And the initial colours of the boxings were actually burgundy with this weird style of artwork. Um, yeah, and it shows an interesting image of the aircraft slightly from underneath. Interesting. That's 1999. The SMER got on the scene just before the year 2000. And then in 1999, they revamped their entire range of boxing, retaining the same artwork. Um, initially, they came out in a sort of a an aqua marine green and purple flash imagery with a, a logo on the front cover marked Super Decals. And I think they were intending to produce kits with better quality decals than what they had in the previous boxings. Um, but it's still the Humbrol sprue that's inside, it's still the, the Heller sprue that's inside the SMER boxing. And that was released the same year that they released their initial range. And then in 2001, they changed the artwork again and went over to a, a sort of a sky blue image with red flash. Um, and this was the style of boxing that they kept for quite a number of years. And SMER released this kit for, I mean, they're still releasing it now. Um, and I've got several of the Hella kits that are found in SMER boxes. And I think they're quite, the boxes are a bit weak to put in your stack. But um, I think they're, you know, I think they're an adequate box. Rent and they're quite bright and shiny and on the shelf and easy to find. So that's 2001's release. And then SMER released this kit in 2006. And I think the only change really is the fact that it's got A plus written on the top there. Uh, sorry, on the top of the box there. I don't think the previous one had A plus, did it? Um, so that's a 2006 release. And then you go into the 2017 release with another company called AZ Model Plastic Kits. And they produced this kit in two different versions. Don't get me wrong, it's still the Hella um sprues that are inside the box but uh they actually revamped um part of the sprue to produce a transport version that had a separate a different style of nose cone um which was which was interesting it was glazed um this particular aircraft was used principally as a transport aircraft but they still also produced the reconnaissance bomber variant that was a 2017 issue, and in 2018, sorry, the um, AZ model, they produced two different boxings, one of the Transport and one of the Reconnaissance Bomber variants, similar to the, the Heller releases. And then in 2018, Heller released this kit again with the original artwork, very similar to the original style of box, but it had a slightly different opening uh, to the box. I think it was like a fold and flap open lid. Um, with quite a rigid box inside to, to hold all the parts. So that's 2018. And then in 2019, AZ Models produced the Reconnaissance Bomber variant. Um, and you can see that particular aircraft has a, a proper nose turret. But again, it's the same sprues inside as the uh, the Heller kit, which, uh, you know, which is quite interesting. So 2019... Again, this was released again by a different company in the same year, 2019, this time by Mr. Craft. Um, it's the Heller Boxings. Mr. Craft have actually released quite a lot of Heller models over the, you know, over their entire range. And not just aircraft kits, they've released other, other models as well in other genres. Um, and the Mr. Craft kits, um, 
they're very cheap very cheaply made as well um and i'm not sure about the quality of the plastic but i have heard that the quality of the plastic is not so good but that was 2019 again you've got separate decals for this particular aircraft which is quite interesting to see how many different variants you'd get um, it looks like three different ones which is quite interesting too so that's 2019 and then in 2020 last but not least we had another re-release of the uh, potest 540 with the original format boxing going back to the greeny asia sort of blue greeny color with the purple flashes and the super decal look and they re-released this style of boxing again in 2020 for some time this year now I, i'm not sure whether this particular kit is actually hitting the market yet but it is imminent to be released um as i said imminently so you'll be able to get this kit on the shelves pretty easily so that's 2020 we'll show you another image here is the um i think this is the reconnaissance bomber variant um in flight in french army de l'air colors um sometime in 1939 um and it just shows the it's an interesting looking thing isn't it but it is pretty ugly and pretty yeah I wonder what the guy was thinking who actually designed this thing, but never mind. Anyway, what we'll do now is we'll just quickly pan the camera down for you very quickly. And show you this kit. And I'm sorry about the condition of the box of this kit. But um, I bought this kit from the guy who sells a lot of second-hand kits. And seems to like taping them up to the hilt. Um, but yeah, we'll go through the box, the inbox review, as, as quickly as I can. Um, you've got some images on the side of the box here of the model made up. Some of them aren't very clear. I'm sorry about that. But you can see that there are images of the kit made up, which are quite nice. On the other side, you've got an advert there for the model. Um, again, made up as, as per the decals and everything. A bit of information on the side there. Parts, numbers, and yeah. Interesting. And then we get into the, the kit itself. What I'll do, uh, what, as what I normally do... We'll go through the instruction leaflet first. Because the instruction leaflet is typical Heller aircraft of the 1980s. Um, the instruction leaflet is basically A3. It opens up into a size of paper about A3. And you can tell immediately from the instructions, just looking at the instructions, that this kit is actually quite detailed. Even for an 80s kit, it's got quite a reasonably detailed interior there. Um, with two seats like all model kits aircraft model kits from Heller there are no pilots or crew anywhere in this kit whatsoever I don't think Heller actually put any crew figures into any of their aircraft um, but basically you can see you, you can see how this kit you know builds up and it builds up into into the full kit after 12 steps which is quite interesting and then the 13th step is really the paint guide now then, on the front page, you've got the serial number of the kit, which is 80395. Hella Humbrol, POTES 540. There's lots of different languages there with some stats and bits and bobs of information about the POTES 540 itself, which is nice. And then you've got the instructions themselves. And I'm not going to go pedantic through the instructions because you can see exactly what you've got there. But basically, what sections 1, 2 and 3 are the three different turrets gun turrets you've got one in the front one a midships mid upper turret and you've got one which i think is like a dustbin uh, ventral turret uh, which comes out the rear end about midships facing rearwards and then in section four you've got the size of the cockpit interior um, an interesting feature of this kit is that you can actually alter the position of the joint of the yoke the steering yoke for the aircraft because they're separate parts look so you know, you could have those slightly steering if you wanted the aircraft, you know, being on the ground with the tail wheel twisted around or something. It's it's an interesting little feature. And then in section five, you've got the main undercarriage assembly, which is quite easy. Yeah, it looks complicated, but I don't think it is that complicated. It's just a lot of bits and bobs that have to go together. And then in six, section six and seven, you've got the engine nacelles with the propellers and the undercarriage assembly, which all goes into those nacelles behind. Um, there's something I want to talk about with the, uh, the POTES 540, which is interesting, but we'll get to that when I show you the parts. Um, and then in section 8 and 9, you've got the fuselage halves, and there's some nice windows to go in there. They're suggesting you paint the interior of the aircraft. 
Um, not sure what colour that is. 947012. Not sure what colour that is because it doesn't give you a guide for the numbers. But um, I'm guessing 94 is the humbral colour. I don't know what 94 is. But I'm probably going to be painting the inside of this aircraft um, a light tan. Because, and for reasons, I'll tell you in a minute about that. Um, section 10, you're putting the fuselage together and you can see straight away it's quite a complicated fuselage build because you've basically got four sides, slab sides to the fuselage. You've got an underside section here and then you've got a top section here which goes onto the two side sections and, and the aircraft is built, the fuselage is made up of four slab sides so I'm a bit concerned about that. I'm sure it'll probably be alright. You've got bulkheads there to glue everything into and jig everything to. So it should should be all right, really, I think. I don't think there should be an issue with that, really. And then in section 11, you're putting the engine nacelles and marrying them up to the fuselage. And putting the two gun turrets on the upper sections there. And then in section 12, you're putting the main airframe together with the wings, all the support struts, tail pinage, and the support struts for that. With a couple of navigation lights that go in. And it looks, it looks quite a comprehensive and quite a detailed kit, quite impressed. And then the last stage, you're basically painting the aircraft. It would be green all over, completely underneath everything, except for the engine nacelles, which um, on the real aircraft, they were actually polished aluminium. Um, or may even have been steel construction, I'm not sure. Um, I would have thought they'd have been aluminium for the weight reasons. And they're quite a high shine on them. Um, a lot of the model, uh, sorry, a lot of the images of the POTUS 540 that I've seen on the internet of aircraft, even during the war serving in, in the French Air Force, the uh, the high shine you've got on those engine nacelles is quite phenomenal. And I will try and render that on the model. It'll be quite interesting to see if I can accomplish that. Yeah, that'll be quite good. But that's the instructions, basically. The instructions are quite easy to follow. Now then. The decals. We've got a little form, a little form inside the box there, complaints form and replacement parts form and safety instructions form. Um, but the decals on this kit, they're pretty typical, I'll be honest with you, for Heller decals from 1980s, late 70s. They probably would have been left over from the late 70s era. Um, and these decals, they're quite they're quite thick. I'm going to be honest with you, the register on some of those blue discs is pretty poor. But even though you've got a blur blemish here, um, and the register isn't slightly great there either, it's not. they're not fantastic decals, they're of a sort of a weird sort of weathered look. They've got a weird weathered look about them, and they look like they've been used and then put back on the sheet. They haven't, it's just the way that they've been reproduced. But I think if you use these decals on this particular kit and you weather the kit as if it was in combat, used during the French campaign, I don't think these decals would look that out of place. I think they would add to the weathering effect on the kit itself. You've got a couple of tail fin, uh, sorry, rudder flashes here, and I'm not a fan of these. Um, I would rather paint them red, white and blue than use those decals because when you use the decals the red section to the back of the rudder there and the white tip at the top of the rudder they're never going to meet up at, at the end um, and you're always going to have a little gap or a trough in between the transfers where you'll have to paint them in and you can never match the decal colours with paint it just never works so I, I usually try and paint those if I can but the decals let's just say they're okay they're not brilliant now then the parts the parts on this kit are very interesting. If I can get them out. Let me look at the transparency sprue first. People like to see the transparency sprue first, don't they? And the first thing I've noticed about this transparency sprue is there are a lot of parts on it. There are a lot of parts on this kit that are clear. <clears throat> and the canopy... The cockpit canopy itself, the actual windshield and the top canopy glazing section there, that's quite nice quality. It's actually quite nicely framed as well. 
and I think it's crystal clear. I think they'll paint it really nice. The parts actually are really clear. Very, very good quality. I'm very impressed with these. Even that particular dome. You know, it's not bad, is it? I think that's very... I think the quality of these parts are very good. You know, they're not aftermarket. They're not vat form. But they're very good. I'm quite impressed with those. So those... Those clear parts are quite good. Quite impressed with them. Um, let's get the rest of the parts out so we can show you what's going on with this kit. Because I'm not going to show you all the parts particularly. I'm just going to show you what the detail and the small parts look like. So you get an idea of what you can expect from this kit when you buy it. Even from an SMER model it should. Or an AZ model. It should come up pretty similar to this really to be honest with you. Um, but the Heller mouldings are very, very good. They're very crisp. I'm very impressed with these. You've got slight raised panel lines on those engine nacelles. But they're they're nicely cast, aren't they? They're rendered really nice. I'm trying to get that into focus for you. There you go. You can see the lines on that. They're not overdone. Yeah, they are raised, but they're not overdone. And they, they look nice. I think they'll paint up really good. Very impressed with those. So they look quite good. Um... You've got some other little detail bits on here. These are the stub connectors for the engine nacelles, the engine mounts, if you like. And they look quite nice too. And you've got some other features there, which is quite nicely rendered. You know, you have to expect raised panel lines on a kit moulding of this age. Um, but I'm, I'm being honest with you, they're not overdone. And the reason why I'm showing you the rivets in particular and these these particular parts is because these are the only parts that carry rivets on the entire kit. Are the engine parts, the engine mounts and the nacelles. The rest of the aircraft carries no rivets whatsoever and there's a reason for that. Um, I'll show you this other sprue first. Now then, the wheels and tyres, they're pretty much run-of-the-mill. The propellers, they're quite nicely cast. They're pretty much run-of-the-mill, though. And the actual parts themselves are pretty much run-of-the-mill until you get to the airframe parts. Can you see how those fabric-covered rudder mouldings are? They're really nice, aren't they? And then you've got the rudder, uh, the tail fin itself. And at first, when I looked at these parts, I thought they were rivets. I thought they were raised rivet lines, but they're not. What you've got here is you've got a recessed line that goes down the side of this tail fin. And then you've got raised panel lines that go above here on this section. And when I look very, when you look very closely at these parts, there's no rivets on this kit at all. They're just, they're runner ribs. And that's absolutely spot on because the POTUS 540 construction method was actually of tubular frame and it was panelled in plywood and then veneered over the top. They weren't fabric covered fuselages, they were veneered. And so there was, there was no rivets in the fuselage or the airframe whatsoever. And again, the fuselage, the side slab fuselage here, you can see there's no rivets in that whatsoever. It's just clear panel lines and they're veneered clear panel lines on the sides and the hella have rendered them absolutely beautifully i think that's really really nice um again I'll put this part back in here because I'll, I'll show you the what i mean with the other stuff you've got the tail planes and again these are the same as the tail impenage that with the rudder assembly You've got beautifully finished fabric cover in there. And again, you've got no rivets on the tailplane. That's because they're made of wood and they're veneer covered. Incredible. And the way Heller have caught that, I think, is really, really nice. And it, it's the same story with the wings. Now, there is a guy who's built this kit and he's done a review on this particular kit. And I, I do sort of agree with him in that I think the actual ribbed effect and fabric covering of the wings because the wings were runners and stringers um, with fabric covering 
but I think they're slightly overdone. For him, they definitely were slightly overdone, but I tend not to spray my models. I tend to brush paint them, and I think the brush painting effect is probably going to take quite a lot of that depth out of that. So that I think, you know, if you brush paint this kit, I think it will work quite well. But I do think that Hella have actually caught the uh, the construction method and the def the differences in textures of the aircraft really well. I think they've tried to reenact the difference in these textures, and I think they've got it spot on. So top marks for that header. I think you've really done a good job. I'm very impressed with that. But, so the aircraft was basically tubular construction, covered in veneer panels, and the wings were wood and um, fabric covered. The only part of the aircraft that was actually cast in in metal were the engine nacelles, the the wheel well apertures and um, the wing mounts and stub wings that the engine nacelles were attached to. So that's the parts, decals and the instruction and Oops, I'll just put this back on. So I know it's I know it's a terrible top lid, but if you want to look at something else to go through all this gunk. So um, yeah, I'm going to sum up what I think about this kit and the conclusions. But what we'll do, I'll just go through the gunk so you can um, you can get the idea of what else is going on here and there. The kit itself is a Hella Humbrol Potes 540. Its initial release date was 1972, and the kit serial number is 80395. The kit is moulded in 172nd scale and there are decals for one version and they're Carl Delaire from Salon de Provence in 1940. This is a 1940 French campaign, Army Delaire Reconnaissance Bomber. The model's dimensions are about 9 inches long by about 12 inches in span and it should sit around 2 inches high on its undercarriage. Now there are 104 parts on 6 grey-green plastic sprues and 27 parts on one clear plastic sprue, producing 131 parts in total. There are options and costs, but the interesting thing about it is, is that all of the options are all the same kit. The standalone model here is the Humbrol Heller Potes 540. Now, the Heller kit is available secondhand on the eBay and other media sites, and the prices range from anything from five to about twenty three pound, but you can get new release models from AZ Model, who build a Potes five forty transport version and a reconnaissance version in two separate boxings, and those kits retail for about eighteen to twenty two pound. The Humbrol boxing that I've got here, which is the Heller kit rebox, that retails for between six and thirty pound, depending on the condition, and the Mister Craft Potes five forty which is the reboxed Heller kit, retails between £10 and £15. The Rico um, Heller boxing of the POTUS 540, which is the, re the Heller kit, I've got no details on pricings for that, but it's probably around about a tenner. And the SMER POTUS 540, which is a reboxed Heller kit, uh, retails second hand for about £5, but you can usually buy it brand new on the shelves for about £16 to £20. Conclusions. Right, this kit has certainly been around the block, but it is a reasonably detailed and fairly accurate model. The real aircraft was of mainly wooden construction around a steel tubular frame fuselage, and the engine nacelles were steel panelled. The Heller, uh, sorry, and Heller have recreated this extremely well, with the fuselage being very clean indeed, with no rivets anywhere. As the fuselage was covered in veneer and plywood, this was correct and the wings were all wooden construction and fabric covered again faithfully reproduced the fuselage sides also have raised panel lines that aren't that too, too apparent the interior detail is also fairly comprehensive with a model of this scale but the slab four-sided fuselage does worry me a little and it could prove tricky but we'll see how things go i think hello kits do build reasonably well with enough going on to interest most levels of, of bot, uh, builders so I'm sort of looking forward to this build. Um, the other thing I wanted to add, actually, um, is that it would be quite useful to produce like a gloss finish for the actual aircraft when you paint the, the aircraft. Um, but the steel 
or if you like the out the polished aluminium i think you can get um quite high polished finished silver paints and i think it might be worth splashing out on one of those to produce this kit i think you would benefit from that and i think it would make a big difference in the overall finished product so anyway that's the inbox review for the Humbrol Heller Potes 540 in 72nd scale. I hope this video has been of some use. Um, if you've got any queries, questions, comments to add, just pop them in the comments slip and uh, in the comments boxes below this video. And any questions, I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.